and we're back. Now we're starting from 1980 to 1989. So in the 80s, this is called the exploration in exchange period. So during this time, remember the martial law started from 1949. It was lifted, and uh, the citizens are allowed to visit uh, the family in mainland. So the mainland Chinese tourism later will be able to come into Taiwan, but not yet. And uh, also, um, many of the nation, the national scenic area was established, and then also encouraged the international more of the international traveler to visit Taiwan. So during this time, it's also like very important to promote our international travel industry. And uh, remember that icon that we have earlier. It's changed to this plum flower icon. So the plum flower is a national flower of Taiwan, and the, in the middle, there's a horse in the carriage, which is Confucius. So Confucius, during the war period, the, he actually traveled all the different countries to promote the Confucianism. So we try to encourage the tourist or tourist industry to act like Confucius to be able to travel all around. And then this icon of the Tourism Bureau was used since 1980 to 2005. So the first important thing is the, in the 80s, is the North Link Railway Line was open to the traffic. So if you remember earlier on the map, we do not have the railroad all the way connected. We only have segments so the Western Trunk Line, the East Coast Line, and then not really connect, not really linked. So in the 80s, we linked the railroad, which expanded the spectrum of the travel. And then in the 1981, the Tourism Bureau opened the visitor center. So the visitor center was established. The first ever visitor center is actually opened in Songshan International Airport. Not the International, uh, Songshan Airport. It's for the domestic airport. It was previous international airport, but then become domestic airport. So they provide the tourism visitor informations for uh, domestic travelers. And then in the 82, the first national scenic area was designated. So it is the North Coast Scenic, scenic Area. So the North Coast Scenic Area, it was famous for the rock formations. And right now, nowadays, it's called the Yellow Geo Park. It's one of the national scenic area. And the iconic rock in the scenic area is called the Queen's Head. So this was the Queen's Head in the 80s. It still had really thick neck. And as you know, uh, the rock was along the coastal area. They had to go through. They went through erosions. They went through. Um, the wind and the water erosions and some climate uh, damage. So currently, if you see the rock, it will be skinnier of the neck and the skinnier of the head and more uh, the features more obvious. And the reason why we call the queen's head is because it looks like the Queen Elizabeth, um, the coin, for example, like Hong Kong coins in the old days, or like the British pond. Uh, nowadays, you can still see the Queen's Head. And then, it's also the first national park was established. It's the Canteen National Park. And in 1987, oh, sorry, in 1983, um, there's a Plum Blossom Evaluation System for Hotel Enterprise was launched. Why Plum? Because I know right now, everybody uses star system, but in Taiwan, at that time, we're not at that level yet, so we just use our own plum evaluation system because the plum is a national flower, and it's also the icon for the Tourism Bureau. So that's the reason why we use the plum flower to identify different class of the hotels. And then, this is also the first year uh, we have a later the Guinness World Record uh, record breaking event called the Summer Lake. 10,000 people swimming carnivals was launched at that time. 
And then in 1987, the Taipei Rao Street Night Market was opened, which is the first ever uh, night market for the tourist market or for the visitor market. And then this is also the first time the government allowed the citizens to visit their relatives in mainland China. And this is also the first international travel fair was hosted in Taipei, the ITF event. So the very important year is actually the 1987. So in the later slide, you can see right now, ever since the first national scenic area was established, we now have more than 13 national scenic area. So the first one is North Coast, and now it's called including the Guanyin Mountain, the Guanyin Shan. So North Coast and the Guanyin Shan. And then besides that, we have Northeast and Yilan Coast, the East Rift, East Rift Valley, the East Coast National Scenic Area, the Maoling Scenic Area, Da Peng Bay, and the Shiraya, the Penghu, the Southwest Coast, the Alishan, the Summer Lake, the Matu, which is offshore island really close to mainland China, and then also the Tri Mountains. These are the scenic area nowadays around Taiwan, and then each of them was managed and operated by the Tourism Bureau. And then the other one are the national parks. The first ever national park was established is the Kenting National Park, which is a national park including the mountain and also the ocean. And then after that, following the Kenting National Park, we have Yamisha National Park, Sheba National Park, Toraco Gorge, the Toraco National Park, and the Yushan National Park was established. And then in recent year, we have the first national park was commissioned by the people. It's called the Taijiang National Park which is including the lagoon and some of the fisheries in the oyster fields. And we also have the Sut Penghu, which is including the, the it's a four islands of the Penghu area. It's called the Sut Penghu National Park. It's very famous for its marine life and then for the diving and then also the aquarium, uh, the aqua system. And then we also have a one national park ability to the more like a war front or like a fortress national park. It's called the Kinmen National Park, which documented the very important history during the Cold War between Taiwan, which is the Republic of China, and the mainland China. Because from Kinmen National Park, the closest point to mainland China is only eight kilometers. This is really, really close. And uh, in Taipei, the Yamisha National Park, which is in the border in between Taipei City and the uh, new Taipei City, is the Metropolitan Area National Park, but it's also our only volcanical national park. So in the Yamisha National Park, we can see those craters that was caused by the volcanic activities. So here are our national scenic areas in the national park. It was starting from the 80s and it continued to establish until nowadays. And then remember the 10,000 people swimming across Summer Lake? So this event, we actually brought the Guinness World Record because in this time, people start to swim from one side of the Summer Lake to the other side. And that's also the only time people are allowed to swimming in the Summer Lake because the other time to protect the water quality only the boating activities and also for the safety for people and also for the, the boat. So only the boating activities, the cruising activities are lost. This is the only day, usually it's in Taiwanese Labor Day, which is September, it's around like September 1st, or it's like the end of the summer, which marks the end of the summer vacation, people swimming across Summer Lake, and then also enjoy the firework event. And Currently, because it's so popular, it's not only 10,000, usually about 20,000. It has to become, it had become two days event. So we have like more than 20,000 now dumped into this swimming pool, which is the lake. And the overall length 
is 3.3 kilometer long. And then following that, uh, we see the photos of our night market. This, these two are the first tourism market, night market. The first one is called the Rauhe Night Market, which is the first ever established as a visitor's market in Taipei City. But before that, we already have so many night markets. Do you know Taiwanese, Taiwanese people love night market? It's because we go there, we have food, we have arcade games, we can have exotic food, and then we can also have several different like uh, like catching the fish or like buying souvenir from the location. And in Taipei alone, currently there are more than 10 night markets in Taipei, but you know the most famous ones is Shilin Night Market, which is really big and commercially. And then Rahul Night Market is also another popular destination. And then the other famous night market is called the Huashi Street Night Market, especially for like Japanese visitors. This Huashi Street Night Market is specially designed and rebuilt in the 80s, so it was opened later in 88. And uh, this Huashi Street Night Market is a, one of the first night market. They have the overhang system, so people are able to walk underneath uh, the roof. So they can prevent the rain. So it, it can be the night market, doesn't matter the good weather, the bad weather, or too hot because it's sort of like semi indoor. And then after the 1980s, we start moving to the 1990s. So this is called the period when tourism took off. It's like flying took off, like huge, huge improvement truly huge improvement because in the 1990s uh, the Taipei World Trade Center was established but at the time we have our first lantern festival was held in Taipei and also the culinary exhibitions was held also in Taipei inside this World Trade Center that's related to the tourism industry but besides the tourism industry there are also a lot of trade international trade event what came into Taiwan which is the ring the different uh, visiting group like the mice group or like the event group or come to visit Taiwan and then 1991 the South link railway line was completed so the North link was completed earlier in the 80s and then the southern link was completed in the 90s so after 1991 what happened is that you can actually go around Taiwan just by the railroad. So you can just hop on the rail line and then you go travel around Taiwan. If you want to do the whole day trip, sorry, if you want to do the whole Taiwan trip, it will be, take, you can finish in 24 hours. But a lot of people, they love to take those overnight train, enjoy the nighttime traveling from point to point. They can even save for the lodging cost. But from Taipei to Kaohsiung, you can sleep overnight or from Taipei to Hualien, or Taipei to Taidong, you can do the overnight train. And so when you get up from, if you departure from Taipei and you'll be able to wake up in Taidong, the East Coast, and see the very beautiful sunrise. And after that, in the 92, it's a development plan for Taiwan tourism and recreational system. So before that, we only have the tourism implementation plan. And in 92, we have the fully comprehensive plan for our tourism industry and also for the recreation industry. So it's not only for the park system, the uh, transportation systems, but maybe some of those like leisure farms and uh, amusement park will continue to be in this kind of system and they'll be more systemized. And in 1992, this is another very important international event, another Asian country broke the diplomatic relations with Taiwan is Korea. And after that, we have the Kenman National Park established, which is the first ever offshore island of the national park. Because martial law was lifted, so the war front was able to open to the public, so we can all now visit the war front to see those cannons, or some people will be able to use the telescope to see mainland China through the coastline. 
And then in 1994, the civic participation in major tourism and recreational facilities was promoted. So it sounds really like wordy. So to make it easier and simpler, it's called the, uh, the BOT, Build, Operate, and Transfer. This type of system were able to, uh, this facility was able to be built and to be promoted. Then in 1996, we have the first MRT route from Taipei, Ruzha to Neihu. Uh, that's the reason why we call the MRT, because it's not a subway. I know everybody thinks, oh, it's a subway, because it's on the road. But our first public, trans uh, this kind of a subway system is not subway, it's above run. So it's called a mass rapid transit. And it's open to the public. And this, it was designed for the light traffic or like a light uh, transportation. But nowadays, because the Neihu Science Park, this become like one of the most busiest ever. But unfortunately, we can not add more lines for this one. Um, also in the same year, the Executive Yuan, which is one that to uh, facilitate our legislative uh, legislature to foresee the policy, to make sure the policy was be able to move smoothly. So the Executive Yuan Tourism Demand Promotion Team was set up. And because this, though they are cross bureau, cross ministry kind of communication system started because before that, we have public uh, transportation ministry, but they also have Department of Agriculture that uh, managed our national forest. And then there's also the construction departments manage our national park. So all the different sites belongs to the different departments. And after the executive UN's development promotion team, they can be able to talk together as one big team. And then after that, uh, the 1999, the Taiwan Hot Spring Tourism Year was uh, designated and continued to nowadays. But in the same year, we have a very unfortunate event, uh, which is struck Taiwan a very, very big time in all different industries, because more than like, 10,000 people was hurt and injured and in, uh, diseased. It's a 1999, the magnitude 7.8 the GT earthquake, it, um, you can see on the photo. This temple is a reminder, it's called the Jiji Wuchang Temple. It's a reminder of the uh, damage that caused by that 1999 earthquake. And then from that, Wuchang in 2000 is kind of the year that we're actually rebuilding and we try to try to doubling the tourism because in the year 2000 after the earthquake we need to develop a new strategy for Taiwan tourism development in the 21st century yes we move to the 21st century in 2000 so it was drafted in 2000 and start to uh, establish later on and in 2001 uh, the Tourism Bureau is trying to shape Taiwan into an island of tourism. We start to recognize uh, the revenues generated by the tourism industry. It's actually bring a lot of different incomes to our uh, local business. So Taiwan International Tourism Brand Image was also launched at the same time. And they actually make a theme song as well. So it's about Taiwan. And then in 2001, this is a very, very important time for the domestic tourist industry because two days of per week policy was implemented. Before 2001, people worked from Monday to Sunday, uh, Saturday, and we have Saturday afternoon off and then Sunday off. But then, in starting from 2001, we have two days off, which means people have more time in their hands they have more plan to their travel and combine with our national travel calendar or national holiday calendar 
they can be able to arrange more of the leisure times. And so at that time, it's a kind of super huge boom for our domestic travel. And uh, the domestic travel business and also the tourism tour company starting to take off in the year of 2001. Okay, so 2002, the doubling tourism arrival plant was launched by our government because we tried to improve, increase our international uh, visitors. So the government actually launched uh, a website to giving the information, international information, give it in English information, Japanese information to allow uh, the visitor to plan their own travel. And then in 2003, the inflammation of national travel card began. Uh, what is in, uh, the national travel card? It's actually for domestic travelers. So if you are either military personnel, your school teachers, if you are a public school teachers or your public servant uh, work for the public administrations, they give you the card and then have a statement. So they have put the money inside, which is uh, deduct from actually or like deduct from your income that added more incentive. So use that card or give you the money to be able to travel domestically or buying the goods that relate to the tourism to be able to spend the money. Uh, because after the two days of per week, uh, the government tried to encourage the people having the domestic travel plan. And that's why we have the DAP, we have the national travel card for the public workers. And then in the 2003, it's also a very sad year in Asia, especially Southeast Asia, which is the SARS pandemic broke out and Taiwan hit hard really badly. And because of that, um, that year, our tourist number, the visitor number, actually dropped dramatically. So 2004, uh, we try to re reinvent our image. So our Taiwan tour bus service starts to operate. So this Taiwan tour bus is operated by the local tour companies and also local bus company. They will bring the visitors that provide 10 days tour, 5 days tour, 8 days tour to go around Taiwan. It will be one plane. And then the others will be local shuttle bus plane. And then 2004, it's a very happy year because the tallest building in the world was complete and open in business in December 21st, which is the Taipei 101. Although nowadays uh, it wasn't the tallest or world tallest building, but from 2004, to 2010, Taipei 101 was the world tallest building. And every year we see fireworks, like the sparkling sticks blowing up the building uh, to celebrate the Western New Year. And then even the Taipei City government, which is the building in front of this Taipei 101 in this yellow color on the photo, they will celebrate the New Year. So they'll host like a free concert on the street, they block the street off to host this block party to whoever participate in this uh, Taipei 101 firework e event. And in 2005, uh, numbers of travelers, uh, visitors traveling to Taiwan exceed 3 million. So from more than, from 1.5 million, now it's more than 3 million, it's already double the number. And at the same time, the Japanese visitor, which is the first largest, uh, which is the largest uh, visitors visiting Taiwan at the time, it's exceeded 1 million and uh, the new Taiwan A Cup A site was also selected, voted by the internet voting in 2005. In 2006, the Taiwan Strait Tourism Association was founded, so which is trying to bring more of the, uh, the visitors they will try to increasing the visitor from mainland China to Taiwan. So at that time, uh, we do not have this direct flight or direct boat from mainland China. You have to go through the third country. So for example, people have to go to Hong Kong and then 
come to Taiwan or from Thailand to Taiwan, you have to go to the third country, uh, the second like, location, and then come to Taiwan. And then after that, uh, 2007, the Taiwan High Speed Rail was open to traffic. And uh, this Taiwan High Speed Rail shortened our travel time from Taipei to Kaohsiung. From the past, it was four and a half hours to five hours on train. Now it's only two hours, so super fast. And unfortunately, the domestic flight from Taipei to Kaohsiung have to be terminated because of that. So right now we are because they're all out of compete with the high speed rail. So right now we only have the commute flight. If people flying to uh, Taoyuan Airport, they can connect to Kaohsiung, but no longer domestic fly from Taipei to Kaohsiung. You have to either take the high-speed rail or the bus. And then 2008, Taiwan welcomed tourists from mainland China. And after that, uh, it's another story of our tourism numbers just like sharped up to a different, you know, the different kind of the tourist numbers. And then in 2009, it's called the Project Vanguard for Excellence in Tourism was launched uh, just by the Executive Yuan to promote and uh, also to encourage the different county government to get the incentive from, our tour, uh, from the central government. And so in 2006 to 2016, uh, we have the new logo of our Taiwan Tourism Bureau. It's called Taiwan Touch Your Heart. So Taiwan people warm welcoming and also the friendly smiles. So these are from 2006 to 2016. And there's even a calligraphy stories in behind this Taiwan sign. I will talk about that later. So this is our, these are the numbers for our inbound visitors from 2000 to 2009. As you can see, 2003, this is when we have the SARS pandemic. And the number one number dropped are from Japan because they're also, although the Japanese didn't suffer from the SARS, but they're afraid to come to Taiwan because of SARS. And Hong Kong and Macau, they sort of hit pretty hard during the period of time. But as you can see, uh, the other country, like European countries, the North American countries, or like Singapore, it didn't change much. Right here, only North America also afraid of the SARS pandemic. So this graphic, the line was sort of like low at the time. And you can see from 2007, the Chinese mainland tour visitors to Taiwan started to go really, really, really sharp incline starting from 2007. And uh, the user, the new Taipei 8 site, voted by internet. So you can see Taipei 101, of course, will be one of the site, right? The tallest building in Asia, in the world. And then this is the photo took uh, from Elephant Mountain, which is really close to Taipei City. You'll be able to see the basin, to see the skyline of Taipei. Uh, of course, we see Summer Lake again. Right? Summer Lake never ends. It's always Summer Lake. Because it's really nice and a super famous tourist destination. National Park, uh, National Pass Museum, because there are Chinese national treasures and a really rare uh, collection of the art, and then systematic, and also for the uh, research. Ali Shan, of course, again, um, our national forest is showcase uh, the wood logging industry. The sacred trees and a really nice walking path, the high mountain rail, of course, attract many, many visitors. Mount Jade, continue everything Japanese colonial time. The Kenting National Park, which is including the ocean and also the mountains. Uh, by the way, this rock right here, in the old days, this is when the Garan Bi was named. Uh, some people will say it looks like Nixon's head. So um, in the Chinese name, or like the Taiwanese call it Chuan Fan Shi. It's like the sail of the sailboat, right? It's like a sail. 
the shape. But for the Westerners, some people think, oh, it looks like American President Nixon with a really pointed nose and then the profile of Nixon, so the, uh, Richard Nixon, so they call it Nixon's head. Uh, the other location was first time ever to be on the top A site is uh, Love River. And, and, own, and the old name was called the Kaohsiung River. It's, it went through the center of Kaohsiung City. It was the third largest city now in Taiwan. It was nominated uh, one of the top A sites by the internet voting. Uh, what you can do is you can be able to hop on this river cruise. It was, right now, it's a solar panel generated electricity to tour the people to see uh, the Kaohsiung port area and also the Kaohsiung city. And then, of course, final on that list, we have Toraco National Park. It's always on the list because that marvelous marble gorge I have to go through in the tunnels with many, many turns, and you're able to see the magnificent view of the marble rock, the cliffs, and then the gorge, so of course. From here, you can see not too many changes. There's mostly areas in Alishan Toraco National Park, Samu Lake, and Mount Jade. It's always on the list.